The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, look, Lewis. Uh, with a little bit of luck, we've got Shane Smolian in the house today. Shane, are you there? Can you hear me, Larry? Yes, sir. You're coming in just fine, my friend. Just fine. Anyway, uh, I was telling the folks from the beginning of the show about these uh, steliums that uh, we've looked at and how I got interested in astrology and. You want to show us what you're looking at because I see things coming into early January that are uh, – just haven't seen anything like this in about 15 years. I don't know if I'm right or not, but why don't you show the folks uh, what you're looking at today and uh, we'll make some sense out of it, okay? Absolutely. So uh, happy holidays to everybody. Happy Hanukkah. Merry mm -hmm. Christmas to everybody. I know we're a little bit early, but we're in the holiday spirit here, so we'll, we'll get started. Um, now – just to refresh people's memories here, that we, we had been talking about the geomagnetic storms before. So there, there's three topics today um, that I'll get a little bit into. Uh, you know, the geomagnetic storms is one that we've talked about. So uh, if we have some time, what I'll do is I'll come back to that. Uh, essentially, this is, a re this is a relatively new phenomenon. It's not astrology-based. It's based upon uh, these coronal mass discharges from the sun and uh, it, how they affect the markets. So this is a relatively new tool, and we've been talking about this, and there's a seasonal pattern of these geomagnetic storms, and they, they tend to follow um, the seasonal pattern of the S&P in an inverted fashion. So uh, if, we, if we have more time, we'll, we'll come back to this towards the end, but this is, this is important to talk about because um, you know, the, in recent years, the last few years, I've really uh, taken a, a, a study of this, and uh, I've, I've tried to really understand how these things work on the short term and on the long term. And I do find, for the most part, they're pretty good. Uh, we've had a few misses here in the last month where we had some of these storms and the market did not go down. But uh, for the most part, they have been behaving uh, as these are more negative influences on the market. And so the reason I bring this up is that what the, the steliums are is they're a positive influence on the market. So uh, sometimes uh, – that you have things like the Bradley, which can go positive or negative. So this geomagnetic activity is mainly just negative, okay? So it does affect the moods of people on Earth. It's been documented, and this research was done by the Federal Reserve of Atlanta. Uh, and so these negative effects actually run um, opposite of the Dow Jones. Uh, so the Dow Jones runs opposite of these storms. So it, it, you can see that as the storm activity rises, the markets tend to go down. And then as the uh, storm activity falls, the markets tend to go up. And then my storms go up in, in late summer, early fall, markets fall, and then we're entering a period now of much more favorable activity uh, for the markets from the standpoint of geomagnetic storms. So I just wanted to refresh everybody's memory about that. Uh, and you know we're going to start out here with this Bradley barometer. So this is going to fall under S&P forecast models. And when I talk about the, the, the solar storms, it's not really a, a forecast model because it's kind of just like we get a heads up that a storm's coming a couple of days ahead of time. It's like we get some warning, kind of like a hurricane is coming. Uh, but, you know, it's not really a forecast model because I can't forecast out months at a time um, uh, like you like you can uh, with, with, with other models. So when I talk about a forecasting model, I'm talking about predictability across uh, months into the future. And... Um, and so that's that's where we start with the 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 Bradley barometer here. So, um, give me one sec. Okay, so Bradley barometer background. Let's talk about this. So, what is the Bradley barometer? Um, uh, Bradley barometer is sorry about that. It's a little interruption there. Bradley barometer, and I put barometer with an S. Okay, because you've heard of the Bradley barometer for years. There was just one Bradley barometer. And what this does is this measures the effects of transits on financial markets. So when we just talked about um, when we just talked about uh, the 
the solar storms, um, we were basically talking about just negative influences uh, based upon these releases of the sun. Uh, what this is, this actually measures uh, interactions of the planets uh, as they they make angles with each other. And so traditional astrology has for centuries and thousands and thousands of years uh, ascribed positive or negative values um, to these to these aspects, right? So, you know, typically conjunctions are generally positive uh, unless it's typically involving Saturn. Some people think Mars is negative, but typically conjunctions are positive and then you have favorable angles, you have sextiles, you have trines, you have squares, and you have oppositions. And so depending on the type of angle that these mark, that these make with the market, um, you know, the idea is that if it's a hard angle, the traditional astrologers believe that the market should view that as negative. And if it's a favorable angle, the market should view that as favorable. And the reason is, the reason why this was tested on the markets is because the markets are, it, it, it's a, it's a, it's a pool of many, many participants, especially equity markets. So you're talking about a large group of people uh, that are affected by the psychology and the social mood and the emotions, right? So the markets are very emotional. And so, uh, you know, the idea is that these transits affect what happens with what hap what's happening up there is what's happening down here. Uh, so originally, Donald Bradley looked at different aspects of this. He looked at long-term aspects. He looked at middle-term aspects. So long-term aspects are the outer planets. He looked at the inner planets. He looked at declination, how how high they go up or below the horizon, which is related to where they are uh, uh, longitudinally. But it's, it's, it's just, it's a way that he, met, he threw this in there. He also had the X factor, which he threw in there. Now, the idea was that these harmonious transits, um, they tended to they wanted they would they would correspond when the market was positive. That's the idea behind it. And then when there was a hard transit, when we talk about you know, squares, oppositions, probably semi squares, um, 135 angles, these these would be hard transits for the market. Uh, and so that's the idea. And so the, it, it's best for equities because, like I said, it's a broad base of participants. Now this model, as you know, and you know with uh, with Arch Crawford, he used this for years. Uh, it worked very well all the way through the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, even all the way up through 2009. But right around 2000, the financial crisis of 2008, uh, things changed because the Fed started with quantitative easing. And I noticed that this particular indicator would stop working um, while the Fed was doing quantitative easing. I did a whole series on this about how – and I went back and tracked the Bradley every time the Fed was – doing QE and when they weren't doing QE that it stops working and then it starts working. It stops working and then it starts working. So when there's less artificial influences in the market, it tends to reflect the mood of the people. And we saw, and again, we see this with the geomagnetic storms too. Uh, the geomagnetic storms, you know, this is documented. I mean, just like I said, documented by the Fed, documented by psychologists, that it does affect the moods of people on Earth uh, when these geomagnetic storms move across Earth. This is just talking about the planets making aspects. So the original Bradley uh, it can invert. So, uh, you know, Larry, you know this is sometimes it looks like it's going up and then it's the turning point that matters. It's not so much the direction a lot of times with the Bradley. Uh, and it works best when the Fed is weak. Sure does. Stay with us, folks. We've got more to come. Shane Smolian, WolfTrader.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Ho, ho, ho! It's December, Tigers. That means festivities, decorating, spending time with friends and family, and the TFNN Tiger Dollar Holiday Sale. Don't miss your chance to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Once you apply your Tiger Dollars to your account, you will be able to use them for any TFNN product purchase instead of your credit card. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to purchase your Tiger Dollars. Don't miss your chance to receive up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase this holiday season. Every Tiger who purchases Tiger Dollars will also receive a complimentary TFNN Tiger mug with their purchase. Act fast, this sale ends December 17th. Happy Holiday Tigers! TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're speaking with uh, Shane Smolian, and we're talking about the Bradley stock market model. Please continue. Yeah, so we started out talking about the solar storms, how those are mainly negative effects. Bradley barometer can go either way. And then we talked about the fact that these are affected by the Federal Reserve. And so during non-QE periods like we're in right now, they tend to work much better. Um, now, the Bradley, uh, thanks to our friend Alfie Lavoie and Air Software, uh, we can optimize this for specific markets. And so why is that important? Well, we can optimize specific transits and plants that affect a specific market. Okay, so I can do a Bradley for the gold. I can do a Bradley for the S&P. I can do a Bradley for the 10-year. I can do a Bradley for natural gas. I can do a Bradley for corn, et cetera, et cetera. So I can go on and on with this. This optimized Bradley, it's more accurate and it has less inversion, which is good. Um, now, the, the original Bradley traditionally was just for equities because it's just the general mood of the people, and typically equity markets are the general mood of the people. It so was 1946 this, when he brought that out, by the way, folks, 1946. I mean, this is, it's, it was inc it's incredible. He did all this without computers by hand. And, of course, this is before we had such interventions that we see now, uh, like with the central banks. And it's a, it, was, it's a different, it was a different time, uh, so it definitely reflected more the moods of the people. Now, the Bradley barometers, this optimized Bradley works well both in sample and out of sample. And what I want to I want to just explain this here, since we do have plenty of time, I'm going to go into this little lecture here for everybody to kind of try to uh, explain how this works. So there's two types of an optimization. There's what's called the in-sample portion, and essentially this is a back test. And the out of sample is how did it actually do into the future? Like when you stop testing it, how did it do? Was it, was it good? Was it bad? Now, here's something where people get tripped up a lot. Back tests are usually meaningless, and they simply model noise. So anybody can do a back test and come up with a beautiful-looking model, it's very high uh, uh, P, uh, profit factor, profit factor ratios, very, you know, all these perf sharp ratios, all these perfect numbers, and then it goes into the future, and the model usually just dies. So, um, you know, this isn't a, a video about designing trading systems, uh, but the idea is that typically when you just when you optimize something in the past, if you have a model that you optimize, let's say this is the past, and it looks almost perfect in the past, usually the better it looks in the past, the quicker it dies into the future. So this is really a big mystery uh, for a lot of people because they focus on statistics and correlations and t-tests and z-scores and all these different, you know, 
uh, ways that, the, you know, chi square, all these different ways they can say, oh my God, it's statistically significant, it's statistically significant, and then they go into the future and it just dies, right? Uh, what you'll find is that, it, ironically, a lot of times when you optimize systems, the, the less smooth it is, if you have a little bit of waviness in the system, it tends to keep going into the future because you don't model all of that noise. Uh, and, and again, this is not about backtesting. We, we get into all this with the Fed use and the polar R squared. But um, what's what's interesting about the, the optimized Bradley is, is that the in sample continues to the out of sample. Uh, and so that provides very strong evidence of this predictive ability. Okay, so I'm going to show you some graphs here. And we showed it before, but I'm going more in depth today about how we did a back test, right? We did an in sample, and then we stopped it in June, and it kept going. And so, the gra Larry, the graph that you're showing people, this graph stopped in June, okay? It stopped in June. So it kept forecasting out into the future uh, using this optimized Bradley. So this is kind of where we are, and I just want everybody to understand the sequence of how we got to what we're talking about here. So this is the, the optimized Bradley here. So let me explain to everybody what this is. So the, the, the black line that we have here, this is the S&P. And this is just the S&P as it's moving through time. You can see this little thin line here. This is the S&P here, just kind of meandering around here. You can see it stops right here because this is where we stop the back test. So everything from this point backwards here is what's called a back test, right? So I don't ever assume that these things work because especially on Alfie software, I don't have the ability to do advanced you know, walk forward optimizations, which test into the future. But this particular model is, is unique because it, it tends to continue going. So this portion here, this is what we would call the future or this is the, the out of sample. So this is the out of sample. And so this is actually, how did it actually do? Like, did it work? Did it not work? I mean, we stopped this last June. I mean, we're six months past this point. Did it work or did it not work? And so what I'm going to show you here in this yellow box is this is the actual portion where it was into the future. It stopped. It was predicting into the future. And so I, I labeled these one, two, three, four, and five here. And uh, I corresponded it on the graph here um, with with the S&P here, uh, this, this graph into here when this came down. So this was one here, two here. This two should be a little bit over here, but this is one, two, three, four, five. And you can see the S&P came down. It should have been a little bit further here, but it came one, two, three, four, five here. And now, and this was the, I think this was two shows ago. I, I predicted this. This was when we I was on the show and I said, okay, now it's predicting that it's going to go up. And this, and this is when I gave you, this is when I uh, shared this information with you about this. And by the way, for the listeners, I have to thank Larry for this because he calls me and asks me, he says, hey, what's going on with the Bradley? What about the optimized Bradley? And he actually got me thinking about steliums. I never even really thought about that. So Larry's, uh, you know, when he contacts me about this information, uh, he kind of really stimulates me to kind of look look in that direction. So uh, so I, was sh I share the graph with him. I say, here's what it says. It's supposed to rally here based upon this model. And you can see here uh, from October, it's predicting this forecast, and this was what it predicted. And so what it actually did here, uh, if you go one slide forward here, you can actually see that the market did it did bottom right at that point there, uh, in in late October, as this model predicts here, uh, and it did it did head higher uh, according to this model. Now this is not the only model that I look at, uh, but this particular model has been working very well, and I think it has a, it's a large part it's in large part due to the fact that the Fed is tightening, and we don't have these constant interventions. Uh, like we normally see where it just causes the market to keep rising and rising. So that's one example here. I have a closer example here. This is a, a, a closer zoom here where I labeled these, these, you know, I zoomed it in so you can see even more here. But you can see on this graph, uh, label A here corresponds to the graph here. This was a low. The label B here is the, the high here. The label C here is a low. Label D here is the high. And then, of course, at E, it's, it predicted this rally. And, and that's exactly what happens. So... Yeah, I haven't touched this graph since June. Uh, this is the exact forecast from June. I typically like to let these things run about six months, so I'm probably going to be re-optimizing uh, re this uh, in the next month or so just to see how it continues into the future. But usually it's pretty close. Uh, and so I think that just demonstrates how powerful the Bradley is and how powerful – uh, if you do this right and you're and you're careful with it and you make sure to check and make sure that this I this is actually forecasting out of sample and you're not just looking at a back test, um, I think it can be very powerful. So that, that you know th this is what I have to do when I call the, the the eye test out of sample because I don't have the software. 
I have other software that I use for my other systems, but this particular system, I really, I ha sometimes it's, it's okay to do that. You can just look at a, a system and just say, hey, does it work? Does it keep going out? Does it keep going out? I call that a dipstick test. Like when you run it, you know, a dipstick test in science is when you just do a quick test to see if something's positive or negative, like a COVID test or something, right? It's a dipstick test. So what I do a lot of times on these, I run these, what I, this is a term that I use, I call it the dipstick test. I run it and then I just let it go out for six months to see how to, did it work? And the, this one is pretty good. So that that's uh, the background on that Bradley. So I just wanted to, to kind of go through that uh, to give everybody an update. And that's and we and we do run that with with our S and P service. And we also have gold okay. in the ten year, as I've also shared with with Larry too. We gotta, so we got to pay a few bills here, my sure. friend. Absolutely. I've taught him everything he knows, folks. This is all <laughs> second nature to me. I give up. <laughs> The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, we're speaking with Shane Smolian, the WolfTrader.com, on a very important subject near and dear to my heart. So please continue, my friend. Absolutely. So we're going to move on to planetary steliums. And I, I wanted to give that uh, that background of the Bradley because the steliums are generally only positive. And I'll, and I'll get into this about the meaning of this in a second. And, and you're the one that you kept sending me these charts of the low in March of 2009 and 1987. You sent me all these charts over and over again. And I and I really couldn't make sense of it because I was so used to looking at the transits between the plants. But I realized, hey, and I think Arch knew about this for sure. He talked about this tight stelium 
uh, back in 1987. He used to talk about this in his newsletters. Uh, but planetary steliums happen when planets line up in a, in a conjunction. This is a longitudinal conjunction when they're basically crowded in one space in the sky. Um, so this is this is not transits. This is not the angles that they make with each other. I mean, I guess you could say they're making a zero degree angle with each other. Uh, but it, it's it's more about are they crowded in, together and working together? So the conjunction can be wide or tight. And uh, these are the, the the planets are working together in a conjunction. So if you think about vector mechanics, if you have two vectors pointing in the same direction, they they add up, you know, almost in a linear fashion. They're work they're completely working together. Uh, you can think about it in physics like the dot product, right? It's like you're, you're taking two vectors and you're turning it into a scalar and you're finding out how much of one projects onto the other. That's kind of like a conjunction, right? Uh, these planets, uh, they tend to be positive So when they, they line up. Now, I created a planetary stelium index in none other than Alfie Lavoie's software. <laughs> this is the market trader titanium I have, right? So I make this index. Because I, I took what you were sending me, Larry, and I, I thought about it. And I said, well, damn, these these I was looking at these steliums. This happened to me a couple years ago. I saw these steliums, and I said, man, why is the market hanging up here? I don't see any transits. I don't see anything. Transits weren't really that big, but they were all packed together. Uh, so I said, well, let me let me see what I can do here. So I, I created this index. Uh, it measures how tight the steliums are. And so there's ways in Alpi software you can write all these logical operators and add things up and – you know, I figured out. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna put these together and figure out when this custom indicator is is gonna predict these steliums because it's kind of hard on a chart. You you kind of have to flip through, flip through, flip through, and see when they're together. Um, but this is a custom indicator, like I said, that I wrote, uh, and it's by the orb of the tightness. And so the higher the orb, the higher the the peak in the graph. Okay, so the, the so the tight sorry the tighter the orb. I should have said tighter. Tighter just means an orb, just for those of you who aren't familiar, is just how close the plants are. So if they're if they're very, very close, we say the orb is within one degree, two degrees, three degrees. And so we measure this. So this is this is an example of what the the planetary stelium index looks like. Uh, this is from wow. 2000. Uh, and I said, like I said, I wrote this uh, custom, so it doesn't exist in his software. I, you know, I I just have it in my file here, but it's 2000 here. This is 2010. And this is 2020. So you can see they do happen relatively frequently. And um, you can see they're not all the same strength of strength, same peak. But when you do see these very sharp peaks, you do tend to get um, positive effects. And they can last for months and months at a time. You can see down here in the in the two, I think this was about nine, eight, seven, six, 2006. This is right where the market was making a high 2006 into here. Uh, and then this was the financial crisis here. I'll talk if we get to that, I'll talk about that. But this, these tend to show up where the markets are making big highs, and the wider the orb is, usually the more planets that are involved with this. So that's it on a big scale. Uh, they tend to be positive events, and the higher the peak uh, in the index, the tighter and stronger the stelium is. Uh, now, here's the thing about this. I've been studying these, and so they're, they're, they're a little bit different uh, than transits because these are generally just positive events, right? So – um, there can be delays after stelium leaves. So a stelium can be, show up at a market high, and then like in 1987, right before the crash, there was a big stelium that summer, and then slowly it's like the air is coming out of the balloon when the stelium leaves. So steliums can occur at market highs, or they can occur at market lows. In other words, if the market is going down, like in 2009, 2000, the Great Front Recession, these steliums show up right at the bottom. In other words, it's kind of like a puncture. It's kind of like a backstop against the market where it stops it from going down at that point. So this is just some observations I've made, but much more research needs to be done because I just created this index. And so I have to go back and start studying all this. But each indicator has its own uh, peculiar, you know, peculiar behaviors and, and whatnot. So we're going to go back in time here. I'm going to give you a brief history of the steliums on the Dow Jones Industrial Index. So I did a webinar last Saturday on this, on part one. So we're probably just going to cover uh, some of what we talked about in part one. And then this Saturday, it's going to be 10 o'clock, not 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock. I'm going to continue this webinar. So if you want to uh, show up uh, on and, and go into more in depth about this, we can talk more on Saturday. So it, the webinar is free to attend. You can just show up. It's on YouTube. And you can chat your questions in. So just kind of to put that out here, if I don't cover enough today, uh, we will go more into depth on this on Saturday at 10 o'clock. So the stelium, the first one we're going to look at is May the 4th, 1890. So this is Dow Jones. We got, we got more data on Dow Jones, so we go back. 
And some people like to splice together different markets from Great Britain and all, you know, they try to do all the Elliott Wave people do that. They splice this debt, you know, the South Sea bubble and all stuff. I don't really do that. I'm just focusing on the Dow Jones right here. But I'm sure if you had enough financial information, you could go back and find these correlations too. But we're going to start just with the Dow. And so what I have here is this is a typical chart of the planets. And what you can see here is that you have a tight, uh, you have a tight, Stelium here on these planets. So when it's, with the stelium is down here, you can see uh, these are the planets. These stelium down here. So you have Venus, you have Neptune, Mercury, and Pluto. Okay, so this is your stelium right here. And what's going to happen here is that this is the sun here, right? So the sun moves always in direct motion, one degree a day. There's no retrograde motion. It's going to move across this stelium, right? And so what I have, what I have found, okay, with these steliums is that when the sun moves across the stelium, it tends to trigger this, this tends to be the peak of the event. Uh, so you have a stelium of planets and then the sun moves across and that's the peak. Okay, so that's just something that I've observed. I've, I've, been, I've been studying this. That's what happens, okay? So uh, what does this actually look like in terms of the planetary stelium index? I'm just showing you a bunch of planets here so it may look like, you know, like, like what is all this stuff? What are these symbols? These are just the way that we represent the different planets. If I go here on the graph, this is what it looks like. So this is the planetary stelium index here. This is 1890. We're going way back. And like I said, the markets tended to follow this stuff much better back then. Uh, we, do, we just didn't have the type of intervention that we have now. Uh, but you can see here that there's this peak here. It comes up and peaks here, right? Comes down, and then there's another peak here in the stelium index. And like I said, when this goes away, what happens a lot of times is the market tends to almost have like a slow deflating balloon effect. But eventually it does tend to, to kind of fall down here. So Hope springs eternal. Uh, I know the, a lot of market technicians talk about market tops as being very diffuse and broad, and but this really exemplifies that because uh, it's mainly, mainly just positive effects. Even if you go back here, you can see this little blip here in this in this uh, stelium here had a little bit of an effect on the market here. So it does does affect these markets in a positive way, and it's there's some pretty dramatic uh, examples that I'm going to keep going through here. But there's this stuff shows up by the way in market crashes it shows up at market peaks uh just like the and the planetary speed index is another one larry that i've talked about with you that's an, mm -hmm. another index i've developed that one shows up too uh in market crashes and market peaks so this stuff is it's, it's just a big clock and this stuff is always kind of working together and so we're just kind of intertwined with this at least that's the theory behind it it's working stay Next tuned helium. folks We'll be right back with Shane Smolian. This will be available in an English language just as soon as we can translate it. This is good stuff, folks. It ain't easy, but it's good. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. 
biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hey, we're back, folks, speaking with Shane Smalley. And Shane, I can't tell you how important this is to me because this is what Dr. Miller set me down with back in 1986 when I first started to take a really close look at this. And Twentyman and I sat with, uh, we just couldn't believe what we were seeing. So this is really great stuff. Someday well, this will be. Well. Uh, you know, no, Larry, you, you, you inspired me to do this. Yeah, well, uh, because. <laughs> I, made a, I, I mean, made a phone call to you. That's the inspiration. Well, well okay, no, I mean, to, to be, know, to be completely honest, I mean, yeah. look, well, to, to the audience. Okay to the guests out there in the audience, Larry always asks me for these charts. He says, send me the chart of this date, or he just give me some random date. And I would look at the chart, I'm like, what is he looking at? And I would, I would send him the chart. And I realized that Larry was seeing these these steliums. Like, like Larry, you spotted these, like in the March, and, and every time you would ask me for the, you know, you'd say, this matches this date, and you were looking at the steliums. And I, I, to be honest with you, I never even considered this as a market indicator. So I always, you know, I what I try to do if subscribers or people ask me questions or give suggestions, I always try to research that because I think, you know, especially my subscribers, I don't mean to brag on my subscribers, but they usually ask really good questions and they're very, very knowledgeable. I just, I just answered a whole, went into a whole uh, explanation this weekend on the market update video about this uh, Chicago financial conditions index and how that, you know, what did that mean in terms of the Fed? So, you know, I, I always look when someone asks me a question, I always try to take that information and, 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 and run with it and try to see if I can expand upon it. So this this is an example of that. So anyway, I do. I digress there. Um, this is so this is 1891. Now we're not even to the 1900s yet, man. This is like we're way back in time. Right. But cool. you can see here. Here's our steelium here. This is in September. So this is 9, 12, um, 1891. And you can see here, this is our stelium here, and then this is the sun moving across. So again, one of the things I've noticed, and it just, it's just for whatever reason, you have to have the stelium and the sun has to show up in that picture, okay? It's, and we call this, in the Uranian astrology, we call this a planetary picture, okay? The sun is really important uh, because it represents things that you can see. It usually represents things that happen on Earth. In other words, people can see this stuff happening. It's not happening behind the scenes like a Pluto-Neptune or a moon aspect or something like that. It's visible. So this is what this one looks like. This one's pretty stunning, actually. This is uh, coming to 1891. This is the early summer here. So you can see uh, the Dow Jones here is kind of just moving down, but it has these little rises here. And every time there's a rise, you can see the stelium pops up here and the stelium pops up again here. Now, fortunately, uh, we can go back and check, like I just showed you on that graph, and you can see here this was the actual big peak here uh, in this one here. It goes all the way up into this is this September the 12th date. It comes down. And like I said, it's kind of like the air coming out of a balloon. It's not a, it's not always a, a sudden um, crash down, but it does tend to fall down, and eventually it just tends to kind of deflate after that aspect. So it's kind of like, uh, like I said, it's it's just po mainly just positive. So this is, it's unique in that way. Uh, like I said, the Bradley can be positive or negative, and the solar storms are just negative. So for for whatever reason, that's just how they manifest uh, in the psyche. So I got one another one here. This is November 23rd, 1895. We're getting closer to the turn of the century here. Um, this one's pretty dramatic, and this was a this was a very tight stelium. Okay, so um, I talked about this. Too. I'm not going to get into 12th harmonic too much here, but I did talk about this fact that um, this one was really tight. You can see how tight this these orbs are into here. 
uh, and the sun had just moved across this. You can see the sun is in Sagittarius here. In other words, it, it moves in this direction across. And so there were other planets too at the same degree of this one. Okay, so we're looking anywhere between 12 to 16, 20 degrees, somewhere in there. This is relatively tight into here, but there's other planets also in here at these orbs into here. Okay, so I think this one was in, in particular, this one was very strong because on the 12th harmonic, which is a whole nother thing we're not going to get into, uh, it matched by degree too. So in other, in other words, we had a stelium here on this conjunction on the first harmonic, and then also it touched on those other angles. That should have been a much tighter uh, stelium. And when we look at the actual chart here, you can see that one actually had a more profound effect uh, on the market falling tighter. So when we have those really, really, really tight steliums, and, and 1987 was a really tight one. Uh, we tend to get big, big market highs. And um, this is one thing I, I want to point out here, too, that this, you know, you can see here there is this jog up here in the early of the year. It matches the stelium rise here. And, and these steliums can be backstops. Like I said, they can just like, in other words, the market wants to go down here. Right. And for, for whatever reason, there's, you know, supply and demand balances, equilibrium going on here. But the stelium comes along. And it kind of provides this as a backstop. In other words, it wants to go down, but the stelium's just kind of making it go sideways. So this is where market technicians come into play. And we look at these things and we say, well, that's a negative divergence because it should have been going higher type of a thing. And so when the stelium actually leaves here, you can actually see that the market uh, plunges pretty quickly here. And notice there's a little bit of a, of a bump here at the low. And that shows up too, by the way, a lot of times. You'll see that at the actual low. You'll actually see like a little rise. We saw that in uh, 2009. We saw that during COVID. During COVID in 2020, there was a big spike in the planetary stelium index right at the low. I mean right at the low. So the one thing I would tell people is we have to take the context of the market into effect here. In other words, just because we see a stelium doesn't mean – that the market's going to rally to some peak high. But what it does mean, if the market is rallying and there is a stelium, there's a good chance that it's going to mark some type of a high or some type of a turning point. And if it is falling, when that stelium comes, there's a very good chance that that's going to mark some type of a low, a, a very substantial low in the market like we saw in 2009. So um, uh, we're going to get, we're getting closer to 1900 here, man. If you, if you guys want to see the rest of this, like I said, Saturday at 10, 10 a.m., we're starting a little bit later this 10, week. We usually start at 10, 8. But, 10 a.m. Eastern, they go to wolftrader.com? Uh, it's the YouTube channel. Uh, I have a, a YouTube channel, Wolf Trader Futures. You can look it up. Uh, but it's okay. free. free. I mean, you just show up. We just chat. It's kind of like very open-ended on, on Saturdays. Uh, and this stuff, t as you can see, it takes a while to get through. So 1899, uh, this is right at, right near Thanksgiving. You can see here, here's another very tight stelium here. And again, what I, what I like about these these stelium indexes, I can actually go to the chart and see this visually. It's very easy to see. And you can see there's a very tight stelium into here. Uh, and so you can see these planets are here too. And so the sun is moving across. Once again, it's moving across this whole this whole stelium into here. And so eventually when it gets across there, um, that's going to be the peak of the stelium. And so this particular one here, you can see the graph. Uh, this one was very dramatic. Uh, it actually at the peak of the stelium here, you can see this. This is the peak of the stelium here. This is this November 26th. That was the graph I just showed you. You can see in this particular case, the market did decline in lockstep uh, with that stelium going down. So there are cases where it does go down instantaneously with the stelium. Uh, but what I've seen most of the time, there is a little bit of a lag in there uh, when when the before the market starts to decline. So that's the basic idea. Does anybody have any questions on this right now where we're? Uh, I don't see any questions in here, but folks, I really, um, I know this seems like uh, Greek mythology to you as it <laughs> does to me, but it does work and it's all related to numbers. And all we're trying to do is match these patterns up with some of these things. And, you know, they're, they're so spectacular sometimes, especially when they line up with the patterns like we had on October the uh, 28th. And why that's so important is that's such a big one that if that breaks by some stretch of the imagination, that tells you that this thing is lopsided and you better look out below. Hey, Shane, we've got to, we've got to leave now, but stay with us uh, for sure. the break. And I want to hear more about this YouTube thing you're having on Saturday at 10 o'clock yeah. Eastern time, correct? Absolutely, yep. And you remind me of that, right, Saturday morning? I'll remind you, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. We'll be right back, folks. Shane Smolian, WolfTrader.com. Oh, 
ho, ho. It's December, Tigers. That means festivities, decorating, spending time with friends and family, and the TFNN Tiger Dollar Holiday Sale. Don't miss your chance to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Once you apply your Tiger Dollars to your account, you will be able to use them for any TFNN product purchase instead of your credit card. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to purchase your Tiger Dollars. Don't miss your chance to receive up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase this holiday season. Every Tiger who purchases Tiger Dollars will also receive a complimentary TFNN Tiger mug with their purchase. Act fast, this sale ends December 17th. Happy Holiday Tigers! TFNN, educating investors. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com to hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com to hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're back, folks. Uh, finishing up with Shane Smolian, WolfTrader.com. He's going to be doing a webinar uh, to go through some of these others uh, into the future, you know, the 1900s and some of the other big days uh, on Saturday. If you have an interest in this, I'm certainly going to be listening to it. But uh, I know these dates have been pretty good in the past, and I'm looking forward to them in the future. It just looks like a real cluster of stuff coming in here in early January, and he'll be covering that. Uh, tell the folks how they can go to that YouTube and, and what's involved, because I, I don't, I've not done these before, so... I'm uh, flying blind, so tell the folks how they do that. Well, Larry, I, I try to keep things simple, which is I, I don't have all of yeah. these registrations <laughs> and, you know, you got to click here and send this. I, I just, you know, just show up. I mean, here, look, you go to YouTube here. It's Wolf Trader Futures. And uh, I, I do, I try, I try to do a different topic each week, you know, and uh, we have a chat and people can just ask questions and chat. And it's kind of an op very open-ended. And so we do that usually 8 o'clock, but this particular week, is at 10 because my daughter's taking the ACT, so I have to take her to take her exam. So uh, it's just pushing it out a couple hours. But at 10 o'clock, I used to, I try to start it early because we have people uh, from from Europe and Japan and all all different places coming. So I try to make a time where people can come in. So usually it's at eight, and we also do a Zoom session on on Sunday where we talk about uh, our live auto trading. But the the Saturday one is really the one that's just more open ended. And uh, you guys can just, uh, you know, you can just show up. And uh, if you if you need to uh, contact me, it's Shane at WolfTraderFutures.com. And if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer it. 
I, I, I'm pretty busy, but I do try to get back to everybody. It might take me a day or two, but I will, I will try to get back with you. Uh, so that's, that's how you can, how you can join us, uh, on, on Saturday. Larry, I found a picture. You ready for a picture? Yes, sir. Can I share a picture with you? Yes, please. Do you remember this? Oh my gosh. That, <laughs> that's you and I in Arch. <laughs> yeah, we were, I think this was Firebirds yeah. we went to. Uh, yeah, it was Firebirds. Firebirds. That's Firebirds exactly where it was. Yes. That, that's a yeah. long time so, ago. My God, it's 10 years ago. More than 10. So, so yeah. I'm surrounded yeah. by the two godfathers here, in case people don't realize. This is Larry yeah. here. He's a godfather of Gartley trading and pattern recognition and trading. And this is Arch Crawford, who originally studied the Bradley barometer. Uh, so this is who I was talking about before when I said Arch Crawford, Bradley barometer. So. Hey, folks. We'll see you tomorrow, folks. May God bless.